Hello Frizzle Freaks! It is time for the mid-year book freakout tag, which is a list of questions to reflect on my reading for the first half of 2023. Question one is the best book I've read so far this year, and it's got to go to Ethan of Athos. This is a book with the most juiciest premise, where in a sci-fi universe there's a particular planet that is men only, and they are very strict about this, and all of their babies are manufactured to be men. And this planet has been running like that for hundreds of years now, when they discover that their ovarian cultures are running out and soon they will not be able to create more babies, which is a big problem, so they send our protagonist, Ethan, out into the wider galaxy in order to collect some eggs. And this book had like every everything that I love about it. Our main character Ethan was like so kind and earnest and brave and like the situations he found himself in were so funny because he is terrified of even the idea of women because he's been raised to think that they're like these demon creatures. It's hilarious. It's fast-paced, action-packed, it's character-focused because Ethan goes through quite a lot of character development in this book. It's wholesome, it's interesting, it's playing with cool ideas about, about gender norms and dynamics, and I loved every second of this book. It's part of a wider series, but if you wanted to read it just by itself, you can also do that. But if you wanted to read the series The Vorkosigan Saga, I have a recommended reading order video for it, and I'll link it down in the footnotes. Question two is the best sequel I've read so far this year, and that gets to go to Revenant Prince. Book one of this series is called Tethered Spirits, which I read last year, and I really loved Tethered Spirits. I gave it four stars, and then its sequel? Even better. It's a five-star book. This series is following three narrators. First we have Amar. Every time he dies, he resurrects the next day, but without any of his memories. So he's kind of really sick of just being a reoccurring amnesiac for forever, and is on a quest to try to find a way to stop his immortality. Our other narrator is a girl that gets swept along on this quest along with him, and she is kind of a warlock who has some trauma in her past that makes her really not want to use her magic, but she keeps getting into these scary situations along the quest and kind of has to learn how to overcome this block. And then our third narrator is the villain chasing them because she desperately wants the secret to immortality. So book one was a very solid, highly recommend. Book two, even better. One of the things that I feel like a book two of a trilogy can often suffer for is it just feels like set up for book three and it wasn't really like a necessary book all on its own, but I feel like Revenant Prince really overcomes that hurdle and I always felt like this book was really important and things were happening that were really challenging our characters in new and interesting ways, that both built on their challenges from book one and kind of exceeded them in interesting ways. Question three is new release you haven't read yet but want to, and I think that's got to go to Magic Tides. This is a new novella book in the Kate Daniels series, a series about Kate, who is a magical police bounty hunter gal in a world where lots of shapeshifter and sometimes apocalypse things are happening. I read the whole Kate Daniels series and I liked it a lot, so now I'm excited to continue with this kind of spin-off novella of it. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year, System Collapse, the seventh book of the Murderbot Diaries series. I love the Murderbot Diaries series with pretty much every fiber of my being, and I am very, very excited for book seven. Question five, the biggest disappointment of the year, and this has to go to a frugal wizard's handbook for surviving medieval England. I was very excited about this book. I have loved many Brandon Sanderson books in the past. I thought the premise sounded especially interesting because it seemed like a mix of like urban fantasy and Jason Bourne, two things that I like really enjoy. So I felt like this would be maybe like a really awesome book for me. I was thinking it could really be five stars and then I hated it with every fiber of my being and gave it one star. I have a video rambling about that and I'll link it down in the footnotes for you. I felt like it was just so poorly written, so disastrously plotted, and I didn't connect with the characters in any way, and it really fumbled the entire premise. So yeah, that was the biggest disappointment by far. Question six, the biggest surprise. This has to go to Daisy Darker. I decided that I wanted to get into murder mystery novels, so I read a few of them, and I turned that into a vlog. I'll link it down in the footnotes if you want to watch it. And though I was hopeful about these books, I didn't really expect to love any of them. I was more just kind of exploring the genre and seeing maybe what I could pursue in the future, but I loved Daisy Darker. This is the story of a very dysfunctional family who are all gathering on a secluded island for their their grandmother's 90th birthday. But then disaster strikes 
strikes as they start getting killed off one by one and they know it must be one of them. And the book is a very much character exploration. There's lots of flashbacks to the family's past and it's not so much of a mystery of who done it as who has the motive to do it as you get more and more into this family's history. So Daisy Darker was a very pleasant surprise because I thought it was fantastic and I'm very excited to read more from this author and more books in this style. Question 7 is a favorite author that's new to me and I just realized the author that I put down in my notes I actually had read a book by her in a previous year which I was going to say Marissa Meyer. So let me look into my books again and we will choose a new one. <laughs> And part of what's going into this decision is I don't want to talk about any author twice in this video. I've planned it out so we're hitting a lot of the highlights of my reading throughout the year in different ways. So that does rule out some of the options here that could be good answers otherwise. I think we have to go with Margaret Rogerson because I read not one but two books from her this year and I liked them both and I loved one of them. So the book by Margaret Rogerson that I loved is Vespertine and this is like Joan of Arc meets Venom, the Marvel anti-hero, and it's so well done on a character perspective. Our protagonist is a teenage girl named Artemisia and she has grown up in a convent of nuns that handle dead bodies and she really loves this work because she can do it without talking to anyone. And then one day their convent gets attacked by like a horde of zombie ghost people and over the course of the fight she accidentally gets possessed by this super powerful demon, but our protagonist is no slouch and she can resist the demon's influence. So now she just kind of has like this permanent voice in the back of her head insulting her and giving her bad advice and also superpowers. And then she decides to go out on a quest to try to help out with this ghost zombie army problem. And it's so fun and cute. And I'm excited to read more by Margaret Rogerson in the future. Question 8 is newest fictional crush. And this hands down goes to Nick Koss from the Minimum Wage Magic series. This is a trilogy of books I just finished a few weeks ago and it was so good! <laughs> These books really mix like a urban fantasy and a cyberpunk setting really well. So we have our main character Opal, a mage, and her partner and sometimes love interest Nick, a cyborg ninja man. And they are like the magical janitors of this very magical wacky city. And then when they accidentally get on the bad side of like the magical mob and also some very angry dragons, things start going down. And Nick Koss is such a fun character. He starts out as very much like the strong silent type, like he's really helpful but he's not going to express his feelings so much and then throughout the books he slowly starts like getting better expressing his feelings and talking about his past and you get to learn about like his child childhood trauma that made him so closed off and he starts opening up to our main character Opal and it's very cute and hands down that's where my crush gets to go. And I also highly recommend the books that was in the running for both favorite book I read this year and best sequel but I decided it needed to take the top spot for fictional crush instead. Question 9 is newest favorite character. Okay, this gets to go to Adrian from the Renegades trilogy. These books are very much if fun superhero comics were made into a young adult novel and I loved them. I've got a video reviewing them and I'll link it down in the footnotes for you. Adrian is one of our protagonists and he is the son of head honcho superhero of the world and he's very much been raised in this so pro superhero environment that he started getting ideas that maybe what the superheroes are currently doing isn't enough and they need to go harder and violate some people's fundamental rights maybe sometimes in pursuits of the overall greater good. And then throughout the trilogy he's kind of wrestling with these ideas of do I stay in the superhero code that my parents have set out or do I strike out and do what I think is actually right for the city. He has lots of interesting moral dilemmas and he's also very kind the whole time to his love interest and sometimes nemesis our other protagonist, Nova. And he also has like the coolest and oftentimes most underutilized superpower where anything he draws can come to life, which is just like so handy in so many ways. Number 10, book that made you cry. I actually have an answer for this one. I haven't had a book make me cry for years and years and years, but one did it this year. And that book is Divine Rivals. This book kind of takes place during like fantasy World War I, where we are following two reporters that are both competing for the same promotion as their lives kind of intersect with the war ongoing on the other battlefront. And this book, the first half, it got me. I was so happy about the romance, I was so sad about the tragedy that happens, and I legitimately cried at that. And it was just done so well and it makes me so excited to read more from this author. Now, I didn't love the second half of this book as much as the first, but the first half of the book, oh, it got me and its clutches so well. 
Question 11, book that made you happy. This has to go to Miss Percy's Pocket Guide to the Care and Feeding of British Dragons. This book takes place in historical England where we are following a drab spinster, Miss Mildred Percy, in her miserable life. And then one day she gets as part of a mysterious inheritance, a dragon egg, which quickly hatches and transforms her life as now she has to take care of this little rambunctious dragon. These books, I read book one and book two, had me laughing so hard. The narration is very much full of witty parentheticals and I just clicked with it. And it's definitely a very wholesome, low stakes book and I found a lot of happiness just rooting for the characters here. Question 12, we're going to go with best adaptation. This year I both saw the show and read the book of Lockwood and Co, which is a story about teenage ghost hunters in London. And the book was very good. I loved it. The show was even better. It's on Netflix right now. I highly recommend it. Our protagonist here is Lucy and she has recently run away from home in order to be a ghost hunter in London and to get away from some drama back at home. Where there she joins the squad of Anthony Lockwood, a somewhat ridiculous teenage boy who isn't always the best boss but is a very entertaining and earnest one. Question 13, favorite video I've made this year. I think that's got to go to everything I love and hate in books. This entire channel and all the videos I've made on it has really helped me understand my reading taste better because I have to communicate it to you in every single book review, right? And then like kind of the culmination of all of that was making a video breaking down like everything I love and hate in books. All the things that to me make a book good or bad that make me fall in love with one. And it was a whole lot fun to plan, it was a whole lot fun to film, and from that video I have gotten a lot of great book recommendations from you guys and I'm always looking for more personal book recommendations. So if you want to head over and watch everything I love and hate in books and then come up with books that will match that for me, please do. Question 14, most beautiful book you've bought this year or received? So this question is the most difficult question for me because I am not a fan of owning things. I love art, I love stories, but I'm not into just owning books. When I am looking to read a book, here is the order of priority I look for things. First, a free audiobook, like from the library, then a free ebook, like from the library, then a free physical book, like from the library. <laughs> then if I can't get it free anywhere, then I'll look for a cheap ebook or audiobook. And then if I can't find that, a cheap copy of the physical book if I can get one. So, and so because buying a physical book is like the last on my totem pole, I don't really have many, but I do have one that I acquired in the last six months. Let me show you it. This is Witch King, a free copy I got from the publisher. Like I do like the gold here. It has a nice visual texture to it, but like I don't think I'd call this cover the most beautiful book of the year. And I don't think I'd call the contents of this book the most beautiful book of the year because I don't really love it. 15, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I'm just going to set myself one, which is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I've read a book by Butler before and it was entrancing and so well written and I've heard so many good things about Kindred and I very much want to read it. And then maybe watch the show afterward. Then question 16, booktubers I've been loving in the first half of the year. And I'm going to link a handful of channels in the footnotes for you to peruse all of these ones I chose because they have less than a thousand subscribers and I love watching their videos. Stay tuned for a future Frizzle Friday where I'm going to do a stats video I set a lot of fun goals for myself at the beginning of this year and I'm going to do a check-in to see how I'm doing on all of those and maybe set some new ones. So thank you for watching.